Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I've got some recommendations of short indie horror fiction for spooky season. So we're nearly at the end of September. Soon we will be in October and everyone's thoughts will be turning to Halloween. So I've got some recommendations today of short fiction in the indie horror subgenre that I've really enjoyed recently. So I've got a novella for you and four short story collections. Before I get into the books though, let's just talk about why short fiction for horror and why indie authors. Um, and I was thinking about like the history of short horror fiction. And when you think back to books that are considered or authors who are considered to be like classic horror authors many of them wrote a lot of short stories so you know Poe clearly you know one of the one of the greats of early horror fiction uh H.P. Lovecraft uh you know did write one or two novels but mostly wrote short stories uh you've got people like Henry James um Shirley Jackson wrote some fantastic short stories and I would argue her you know her best known work is probably The Lottery which is one of the greatest horror short stories ever I think even though it's not paranormal it's an absolutely horrifying short story and I think that short stories lend themselves really well to horror um, because horror is often about like simple creepy ideas and some of the best horror stories are ones that just have you know that an, an idea at the heart of them and then a twist at the end and that's something that works really well in the short story format I always find that novels that have a big twist at the end can end up feeling a bit disappointed because you've invested a load of time in the book thinking it's about one particular thing and then if there's a twist at the end that can kind of sour your view of the rest of the book whereas for short stories I think it works brilliantly and you think of you know something like the Twilight Zone the TV show um you know clearly some Twilight Zone stuff was science fiction but a lot of it was horror and that pretty much all relies on that kind of twist at the end um so I think short the short story form works brilliantly with horror fiction um so that's the first part of the, of the puzzle. The second part then is why indie horror? I find indie horror to be really, really interesting. I think the horror genre is the one, certainly in my experience, where indie authors are contributing most to the genre. When you think about like crime, there is some indie crime fiction out there, but not a huge amount. You don't see a lot of um, like independently published like general fiction get talked about a lot. You don't. I, I, I may be wrong, but I don't think you see a lot of independently published science fiction and and fantasy fiction get talked about a lot. But horror fiction, you do see a lot of indie authors getting discussed by channels like mine. Um, and I think the reason for that is horror fiction is all about you know challenging the reader and trying different things, trying different things to to freak the reader out and gross them out. Um, and sometimes traditional publishers can be a bit slow on the uptake with, you know, kind of new stuff and, and unwilling to really push the envelope because, you know, they have a bottom line. They, they need to sell books. And so they tend to just try and market, you know, the same book, same kinds of books again and again. Now, you do get some, you know, breakout authors who are traditionally published who do try different things with the horror genre. But I think you see a lot more of it with independently published authors um, because they, they have less to lose. Um, and you know independently published fiction I think is often you know really written from the heart and in the horror genre which is about fears and phobias and you know our, our darkest innermost thoughts I think you know not, not being worried about offending people can be you know a really positive thing so I certainly really really enjoy independently published horror fiction and as I say all five of the things I'm going to talk to you about today I had a really good time with so as I say four short story collections one novella let's start with the novella because that's actually the thing I've read most recently so this was Harvest Blood by A.W. James so this has got a great great concept and just a really nice vibe to it as well I just really really enjoyed this um, so the vibe is it's kind of like an 80 uh, like a fairly low budget 80s horror movie I can imagine watching something with this plot on VHS with a group of my friends I, I had a group of friends when I was at school and we used to pretty much every weekend just get together and watch you know one of us would bring a movie and we watch the movie and this is just the kind of thing I can imagine us watching so the concept is there's this small town somewhere in the states I can't remember which which state it's in and for the past 11 years every year on Halloween a local child has gone missing and the local sheriff is determined that this year he's going to crack the case um 
And as the book progresses, I, I won't spoil it, but various different horror kind of concepts get introduced. Um, there's some spooky stuff. There's some gross stuff. There's some kind of almost like cosmic horror type stuff. There's all sorts of stuff going on in this book. It's really fast paced. None of the I he he, he the, the author kind of has all these different ideas within the book, but he never gets bogged down in a particular idea because it's all about pace. It's just a really enjoyable, fast read. Um, I read it like cover to cover in one sitting. Um, so yeah, interesting ideas, but it's more about the vibe and the pace. And as I say, that vibe is kind of 80s, 80s low budget horror. So yeah, I had a really good time with this. Um, next up then, a short story collection, Dread by Kevin Batchelor. Um, so this was really, really an interesting collection. And the thing that impressed me most about this collection, so there's like over 20 stories in it, all sorts of different themes covered. So there's like animal attacks type stuff, there's spookier stuff, there's a really wide range of different things. What really impressed me was the way that Kevin Batchelor ramps up the tension in these stories. He's really got a knack for like gripping you as a reader and inserting a kind of a, a mystery in the story that you feel you just need to keep on reading in order to get to the resolution of, to find out what's really happening. The story that impressed, impressed me most was about these two cops who are investigating um, a, a car, an abandoned car, um, so left by the side of the road in a kind of an area of, of like woodland, and the driver's clearly just walked off, and they go into the woods at night to try and find him. The two like cop characters, really well done, but there's just this overwhelming sense of tension and like dread <laughs> appropriately enough given the title of the book as you as you keep reading it so it was a really a, a great story and i thought the collection overall was was really good as well next up then another short story collection very different in in vibe this time but really really enjoyable so this is cruel nature by db albiza so db albiza is a teacher and she wrote this book for her kids to get them interested in reading so it's seven middle grade short horror stories you know kind of think think back to uh like scary stories to tell in the dark or you know kind of goosebumps that that kind of thing although these are like genuinely creepy some of these stories so just a nice mix of different stories she's got a really nice writing style um, and the book has fantastic illustrations as well um really really love the artwork in this book uh, which is by uh is the name on the cover it's not on the cover Apologies, Elizabeth Quinones. Um, so yeah, really a, a really enjoyable collection. Again, some of these stories like have a twist at the end, which makes them even creepier. But there's just something quite unsettling about some of these stories. I th I suspect if I'd read this book as a kid, it re it definitely would have left an impression on me. But it would have really creeped me out as, a, as an adult. It creeped me out. Um, but yeah, very nicely packaged. I love the cute little size of this book. So yeah. But, Really nicely done. If you've got like a, a kid in your family or in your life who you think uh, would enjoy some creepy horror fiction that's you know specifically aimed at kids, I definitely recommend this. But even as an adult, I really enjoyed it. Um, next then, another short story collection, Death is Funny Sometimes by MC August. Um, so again, this has got you know, a decent number of stories in it, a wide range of different subjects covered. Um, the first story, for example, is about um, like a vampire attack on a biker bar. There's a story I really enjoyed about a, um, a an ageing actress trying to get revenge on the producer who snubbed her. Um, my favourite story was about a sleepover that goes horribly wrong. Um, so there's all different sorts of stories in here. One of the things that really struck me about this book was it feels quite... Like it feels like it's written by someone who loves cinema. So quite a lot of the stories like reference cinema in some ways. Um, but there's just something about the like the pacing of the stories and, and the way in which they're written um, that spoke to me of, of like, you know, of, of movies. In particular, a lot of the stories have quite a lot of dialogue in. And that dialogue is really, really well written. I'm very, very impressed with the dialogue in this book. If, you know, in Dread, the thing I was most impressed with, impressed with was the tension. In Death in, Fun is, in Death is Funny Sometimes, it was the dialogue. I thought the dialogue was, like, genuinely excellent at times. So, yeah, again, a nice mix of different stories. As the title suggests, there's quite, there's a kind of a dark comic edge to a lot of them. Um, some of them did have me chuckling a bit. So, yeah, a nice variety of the stories. Some nice humour as well, and just another really solid collection. 
And then the final book uh, is Red Moon by Kerry Richardson. So another shorter collection, just six stories in this one. But I had a really good time with it. So again, the, the thing that impressed me about this, this collection was the variety of the different stories. There's a couple of connected stories um, about this creepy house and like murderous goings on there, which were really nicely done. And, and the connection between the two, I thought, worked really well as well. And then there's another one called Red Moon, which is my, my favourite of the collection, which is a Lovecraftian one. And Kerry Richardson managed to, to capture the kind of macabre themes of Lovecraft and the, and the style of Lovecraft in a kind of reasonably modern way. So it doesn't feel like a dated story. So yeah, another collection I very much enjoyed. So yes, a few indie horror recommendations for you there for Halloween season. I'll leave links to the Goodreads pages of all of these books in the description of the video. If you click on those, you'll be able to find places you can buy them that are you know local to you. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed all of them. Would definitely recommend all of them. Do let me know in the comments your favourite horror short story writers. Let me know if there are any indie horror authors you think I should be checking out. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.